Welcome to the P Pro Podcast. Today we've got an exciting lineup with Professor Kevin Till. Uh, Kevin, I hope you're keeping well. How's things? Hi, Ryan. Uh, yeah, really good, thanks. Um, yeah, good to be out of lockdown and getting back to uh, some normality. Yeah, good. So uh, the sun's shining. Uh, kids are obviously getting back into you know school life and with the bubbles start to relax in different schools. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about the journey. So from you, you've been a professor now. You've got years of experience uh, in the sport, uh, in the academic side as well. Where did the journey start for you, Kev? Oh, well, going back a few years. So um, I guess, you know, sport has, sport has always, you know, been a big, big part of my life. So I think, you know, from when I was two, three years old, my, you know, mum and dad said I always had a, a ball or a, a bat or something, you know, in my, in my hand. Um, so, you know, Big, big interest in that. And then I think, you know, as I was growing up, um, you know, just played and participated in, in lots of lots of sports, you know, rugby, football, cricket, uh, athletics, and then other stuff about, you know, taekwondo and, and those sorts of things as well. So I think really active as a as a young, as a, you know, a, a youngster. Um but, you know, that was with in organized activities, but then probably also, you know, in, in play. Also out, you know, always out playing sport in the street or in the in the garden. Um, my mum probably nearly had a, a window, kitchen window smashing a few times with the cricket ball and you know those sorts of things. So I guess that you know it was a, a big um, a big part of growing up was was sport and you know I, I just I loved it. Um, and then I guess as as I get older, you know, you start to have to make decisions about where you want to to focus and. Uh, rugby league was probably always uh, the sport that um, you know I was probably the the best at in terms of the activities that I did and the one that I you know loved the loved the most coming from Cass and a uh, Cass Tigers fan and growing up in that uh, environment probably influenced that a little bit. Um, so yeah, while while playing a lot of sports, rugby probably came the focus. Um, you know, around 14, 15 years of age. Probably, you know, identified as a as a talented player, um, selected onto the you know the Casper Tiger sort of a, academy program at the time into the NFLs, um, like player development programs. So I guess sort of identified as as talented, and that's sort of no, I, I was like to start my my story, but probably a failed you know a failed athlete really, and um, never went on to uh, to achieve what I, what I'd hoped for uh, you know a variety of a variety of reasons. Played a, a little bit of semi-professional rugby league, you know. Lucky to you know represent my, my country at student student level and, and got two tours to Australia, in 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 there as well. Um, so you know, I had some success in the game and brought me a lot of lot of positives, but probably never never achieved um, you know what I wanted to do as a as a player. Um, so yeah. So where to let's take it. Let's go further back then. So you talk about your, your youth growing up with the ball and things. Who was the influence? Was it the school? Was it parents? Was it uncles, aunties? Where did it come from? Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. You know, parents, and you know, my uh, yeah, my, my dad was the biggest, the biggest influence there. So I think that was you know very. Very much, you know, encouraged to to do those sorts of sorts of things. Um, I, can't, I can't remember probably primary school that 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 well in terms of of, of that. But then, you know, as you start to play uh, community sport and um, you know a range of different coaches and and then probably peers influencing that as well. You know, you, when your 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 friends are all doing those sorts of activities, it's it's just natural to you know to to follow them. Um, and then I guess going into to to high school. You know, there was a number, a couple of PE teachers there that were, you know, big, big part of, of that as well. So I guess it's, there's a multitude of, of people, um, you know, starting with, with family and, and parents that then goes on to friends and then goes on to the, you know, the the teachers and, and the coaches that you have o- over time that, that have a big influence on what you do. Which teacher would you say impacted you most regarding, were, were there any PE teacher at primary or at secondary that made an impact on you? Yeah, I... I think it was probably secondary. I can't remember. To be honest, I can't remember um, in school at that at that time. Primary, um, you know, PE. You know, it was probably more of that out of out of school things that that influenced me. 
Um, there was probably two two teachers. Um, you know the you know uh, Mr. Bank, the Airdale High School, Mr. Banks and and Mr. Elliot were the were the teachers there. And I think um, Mr. Banks, you know, from a rugby perspective, was you know quite heavily involved in that that progress. And I think actually Mr. Elliot was probably more from the the academic side. You know how I've been successful there. I remember doing uh, GCSEPE and and just sort of loving that side of it as well. The, you know the education, the academic, and learning about the body and and all those sorts of things. And really really excelled at, at that as as well. Um, and I think that was probably part of the, to his teaching and enthusiasm for the for the area. Uh, so yeah, th- I think those two two people were quite big in um, in that. Interesting you say that. So we talk about, you know, you know, the variables from parents to teachers to uh, not remembering much in prime. That tells me no made an impact because, you know, we talk about the you know, fundamental like, movement skills and things and starting early. And uh, I suppose everyone's got a different pathway. But interesting there you say that your passion, obviously, for the GCSEPE. So actually, not just you were good at it, but you enjoyed it and you usually find out you know, when you enjoy things, it comes across naturally anyway. So that's another side, the academic side, as opposed to just playing the game, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think that's, you know, that's that for me, that's um, that's pretty key. You know, we uh, we want we want to develop people that, um, you know, are, are sporty or healthy and, and fit, but, you know, especially in, in, sort, of, in sort of talent type environments, with the education of these, pe- you know, of, of children and young people is, is key as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that was, you know, probably back to my, my journey. I didn't touch on it there, but you know, I had a very bad injury at, at 15 years of age. Um, you know, I, I broke my I broke my femur and was out of the game for, you know, I didn't play for 18 months at that like key period. And that's probably where education became as much a part from a sporting perspective as you know, doing the sport as well. So I think, you know, it's it's key in terms of those two two real trajectories you know sport and or you know health fitness sport alongside academic uh, and education so your journey there goes from obviously doing a GCSE so where did it go from there talk about the transition there because obviously you, you're highly good academic doing really well at the GCSEs where did you go from there yeah I'll, I'll, I'll probably talk, talk about but I guess simultaneously the sport and, and the, the ac- academic so like, as I said I had that injury was out about 18 months um, which took me to, you know, leaving high school with, you know, with some good GCSEs to then go to Ponty College. So in that year 11 period, I didn't, you know, I didn't play rugby. Uh, I didn't play any sport because of the injury. So there was, a, you know, more of a focus on on the rehab, but then also my, my education. I then went to Ponty New College uh, to do A-levels um, and, um, and then started to play at Casford Tigers Academy. As a within their under eighteen squad, so from the rugby perspective, I really struggled with that transition. You know, I'd gone from playing under 15s rugby amateur to then trying to play professional academy rugby, and I just you know I I really struggled. I'd I'd missed a lot of development, and it was probably a bad I mean, you know a bad thing. And I Is that, to, is that from a physical point of view, or skill, or mentally, or what? When you say I, that? I think it's probably I think. I think it's probably a, a, a range of things, Raz. Just, you know what I mean? There's, um, I'd not played much rugby in that time, probably similar to some of the kids now in, in COVID, you know, the, the length of time. But I hadn't played much rugby and I just wasn't, like, from all aspects, probably, probably ready. Um, so, I, you know, I took a step back a bit to the amateur game and, and dropped back down to Featherston, Featherston Academy, which was sort of a, you know, still a rugby academy, but a lot lower level and, you know, it, it took me quite a while to to get my confidence and just enjoy playing the game a little bit again. And then, I, I guess during that period, um, I did my A levels at at college in um, in sports, maths, and IT. And um, I actually applied to to university to um, to do an IT degree initially. And before going before taking up the place, I decided that actually, you know, I wasn't I wasn't going to do that and actually got a job. Um, and that job was uh, was called a, a pension review administrator, and that <laughs> wow. and that's that, that that job title sounds about as exciting as the job was. Uh, <laughs> oh. right. So well, this well, this in Wakefield or Leeds or it, it, but it was a uh, you know it was a really it was a, a bloke that works like as a consultancy and he he needed some 
people to support his, his work. So it was actually in a house on the Favourite Road in Castleford. Um, and I, um, so I did the job, you know, um, you needed a maths A level to, to do the job. Um, so I, I got the job and after, you know, after about three months, I realised that, you know, this wasn't, this wasn't me. Crunching um, numbers. This wasn't, yeah, this wasn't me. And then, um, you know, to be honest, the, the job was was good. You know, I, it, it allowed me. I know it was decent pay for an eight, 18, 19 year old, and um, and things. And I actually carried on doing the job for five years on a part time basis. But I realised after that two or three months that it wasn't me, and I had to follow my passion. And that's when I then applied to uh, to university to do sport and exercise science at, at Leeds Metropolitan University at the time back in uh, uh, two thousand two. I think that was. Um, so to really follow that passion of sport. And that what I'd really enjoyed in that education uh, area, um, and and really do that. And I think that was worth. It was a good thing doing that job because it made me want it more. It made me understand myself a bit more. And as I said, I you know from a financial perspective as well, it was probably useful because you know with some part time part time income coming in to support that, and always having that drive to to do better in terms of you sat in a job that really you didn't really want to do. Um, and then where did you go from there? Because look, yeah. everything everything serves a purpose. You look back at it as part of reflection. And, wow, you know, I believe it. Everything does serves a purpose. And then step in. So, so where did you go from there? When yeah. you the Leeds at Beckett's or uni, was it? Yeah, so I did, did my did my three-year degree, sport and exercise uh, science. Uh, really, really enjoyed that. Um, again, carried on playing at uh, a Fev Academy, sort of in and out. Never really broke through into the, like the first team. Um, and then actually started playing rugby at, uh, at university. With um with the coach there, Paul Fletcher. I don't know if you know him, but yeah, no, um, well, Fletcher, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, been, right. uh, yeah, he's uh, you know, was a great influence. And I think it was when I when I got playing at student rugby, that's when I started enjoying the rugby more. You know, I, it was it took the pressure off, and I just started enjoying the game more again, which therefore resulted in me probably playing better and and p- performing better. Um, so, like I said, I went on to to uh, to represent. Um, you know, England and Great Britain students on some tours to Australia and met some real good friends and just enjoyed enjoyed the rugby, enjoyed the experience. Um, and then again, alongside that, finished the degree. I finished the degree and wasn't quite sure where I was going to go. And an opportunity came up at, um, to stay at the uni to do a master's and then do like what was called an, an internship placement at Leeds United Football Club with their academy. So I was in there, you know, offered a, a position to be there, like, academy fitness coach at the time which you know this was 2005 so quite those positions weren't really about that at that point and um so yeah i jumped to that and worked with a, a guy called uh, dean riddle there was who was um, you know worked in a, a few organizations in the uk and is, is now in the states and and uh, was a big you know mentor for me from a, a coaching and sports science snc perspective so, um, so I did that year, did my master's, achieved pretty well, did the placement at Leeds. And I was like, oh, I'm going to walk into a job now. I've got a year's experience at Leeds United. I've got a master's degree. Um, I, and it I, I remember applying for jobs and I was just getting knocked back. I, I, you know, I, weren't, I maybe got interviews, a couple of interviews, but I, I wasn't really successful. Um, so I, you know, I started doing really part-time, part-time coaching. I did some at um, at Yorkshire County Cricket Club with uh, the tennis tennis academy at the university, and actually Dean lost his job at Leeds United uh, when uh, at the at the time about a couple of months after I sort of finished my placement, and Dean actually then came to um, to Cass with Terry Matterson at, at the time. Terry, had, I think, had just taken over, so as a Cass lad, sort of, and a good relationship with Dean. Dean sort of, you know, invited me down to the club to support support him, you know, over that time as um, with the with the first team as a bit of a an assistant type role. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'm going to find a bit of tangent here, but yeah, so you know, I was doing multiple things, but I didn't have a full time job. I had lots of like part time hours going on, and then an opportunity at the uni came up to do a paid PhD um, in what was you no, know, the title was around long term athletic development. Of, of youths and I was like you know I, I, I told you the idea but I guess then I thought the opportunity to do further study and get paid for that and then be allowed to continue my other roles 
probably made sense at the at the time. So I, I, I took the PhD and was able to continue those those um, those roles that I'd been doing, um, which then I guess you know I, I started on that that PhD journey, um, which was you know has been really beneficial in the in the long term long term for me. So do you, do you think with what you went through with the sport and the injuries did that and what sport the resilience and things that you get through sport do you think that helped when you were getting knocked back to jobs that resilience just to keep going? Yeah, massively. I think there's a few things. I think. Having that sporting background was probably part of the reason I got the offer, got the the internship at Leeds United. Do you know what I mean? I, I I'd been in professional sporting environments. I could li- I could lift. You know, I could weight lift and Olympic lift and stuff, which were, were things I wanted to bring into the academy players at the time. So it wasn't, and and obviously I'd done the sport the the degree, but it was probably more my other experiences that that helped me get that role. Um, but then also, I think the you know just those knockbacks and and things. It probably didn't. You know, I'm, I think I, I I work hard. I, you know, I, I work hard with things, and I'm I'm pretty resilient. And we'll probably come on to that a, a little bit in, in a way. Is that if you do get a knockback, I just you know, I think you just get back up on your feet and you just keep going and not try and worry too much. I think I am quite resilient that way. Do you think that that you learn that back in the day? You know, playing in team sports and things. Is that what you think? Yeah, I think I think there's a variety of things, right? I think it comes from, from yeah, definitely from sport. It's there. Being part of that group is massive. Because actually, even as a member of staff, you still you've got to work with different people, with the staff and the players, and therefore being being part of sport and being within teams is is key to that in terms of establishing those social, you know, those social skills, communication skills, etc. So we you know we come back to what sport offers. It offers like so many life skills alongside those things that have probably uh, yeah. Probably played a, a part in my journey quite a lot. So if you if you you know encapsulate everything you talked about there, and think about obviously the children that we're working with now, it's twelve thousand children a week, and we're seeing them in schools and with the COVID. This is the the community games as well. Whether it's you know sorry, whether it's, I'm talking generic here, but you know football, dance, gymnastics, different act, hockey, all these kind of team sports. But however, we know the barriers that some of these children can't get parent support. Financial is a big thing. You know, so PE is the only chance where these children are going to get some, uh, you know, physical activity and, and some education through the lessons. So how important for you is PE now coming out of COVID? I don't, I don't think it's ever been more important. I think before COVID, and we've, you know, we've chatted about this for a number of years, uh, I put my academic hat on and we know that, the you know the country is declining in terms of fitness, physical activity levels, um, you know health, well being. We know that though that was declining before COVID. Now COVID's been it's probably never been as bad. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's evidence to support that statement, but you know, probably anecdotally, I think we can say that. We then consider that life is very different to what it was when probably we were young, 15, you know, 20, 20, 25, 30 years ago. Therefore, like for me, school is a is a primary place for at least to get everybody, and I mean all all youths doing some you know physical activity related to, to that and you know and and sport, and hopefully by doing that within there, we'll then encourage people to go and do that out of school as well. Um, so you know, I think it needs because if people, if 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 children have, haven't got parents that are going to do that, where are they getting those opportunities from? And I honestly don't, I honestly don't know. And and for me, and as we it was discussed, it'd be it'd be great to see in schools or through government that there's you know there's some sort of, sort of requirement that you know it's definitely more than once a week. Ideally, it's more than two to three times a week. And you know, in a real in a I know there's a lot of priorities that schools have got, but some element of doing some sort of stuff five days a week from for me is would be would be brilliant and where we need to go to overcome these issues. Yeah. I think you know yourself, like we say, you know, being being in the background that we've that we've been in and we understand the importance of the physical activity that the health and well being that comes around that getting, you know, switching the neurons on and it helps the learning as well. The research shows that we can see that obviously the pressure that head teach under as well. We know that the maths and English but we do see a bit more, there's a bit more media out there regarding trying to change that mindset. 
uh, regarding the importance of you know being physically active, not just in the in the P lessons, but the active curriculum, which is talking about different frameworks, working with you know birth to nineteen in Bradford, just some of the initiatives that are going on. There is some good things for me. The more I speak to people, and be like yourself, Kev, is uh, it's about people, and it's about you know you talked about eight hey, weeks, your parents. You know, I spoke to someone last week. It was uh, a teacher. So so. So the balance, some, some as we know, some of these children are coming from really, really challenging backgrounds where they haven't got that role model at home, you know, saying, come on, you know, you can do better. Or let's go, you know, giving them that confidence. We know at home some people are, you know, you're rubbish. And we see that in that, you know, in the PE lessons, you see them children at the back, you can really see that. And it's, for me, it's, you can have the best tool in the world delivering in the PE, but ultimately it's about people. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, without without a doubt, mate. And uh, that's that's where those relationships come from, isn't it? And back to those ideas around those role models and influencers. It's about people and, and encouraging that. But also, pe- I guess the people need to have a they need to have an understanding of the appropriate things that they need to be doing at those ages. So it's not just about for me. It's not just about being enthusiastic and being positive. They still need to have an understanding of these are the things that we should need to deliver at certain ages and stages with children and moving away from, you know, some of that very sport specific type activities at, you know, five years old to really saying, well, actually a five-year-old needs to learn on try and develop all these types of different skills, fundamental movement skills, you know, et cetera, multi-skill type activities. So it, the people is key in they, they need to be positive and, I'm mean, enthusiastic and and really emphasise the importance of it, but then they also need to have some um, knowledge and of what are the appropriate activities to do as well, which is sort of I think really where the you know the obviously the P Pro and and what you you've developed there is is key in terms of that. Okay, so upskilling teachers, what you're saying here is upskilling the teachers and giving them the knowledge to be able to deliver outstanding PE. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, we're de- definitely teachers. You know, and we could go wider than that, couldn't we? We could then go to we could then go to coaches, and then we could go to parents in terms of what is what is appropriate. But that's the idea. If the school is the uh, the school is probably the, at the minute the central place where we can deliver this deliver phys- physical activity, PE, um, sport consistently. To me, that sounds a sensible place to to start. Yeah, you've got the triangle. You've got the school. You've got the child, and you've got the the teacher. And you've got the triangle, aren't you? Because you know, you know, you're seeing the schools, they might be doing some good work, and at home there's not much happening, but they come in there. So for me, the big picture is if you can get the you know the parent as well with the with the teacher and the child, everyone buying in. But ultimately, we know there's that many variables out there about you know what's best practice and things like that. I suppose for me, big thing we talk about the stuff of the, the physical literacy institute is the four pillars of you know motivation, confidence competence and knowledge and understanding what are your thoughts on the physical literacy model and uh how it ties into long-term athletic development and, and in primary schools PE yeah it's, it's an interesting one as and uh and I guess from um you know from discussions we've had so I guess I'm I'm probably more from a an athletic de- my, my work is and, and knowledge and understanding is from an athletic development perspective around developing athleticism um and then you've got this uh, the, you know, I guess the other um, another group of sort of you know uh, our body around physical literacy, but as you say, you know when when we're, when I've looked into into this and explored it a bit further, then the principles are very similar. You know we're talking about the we're talking about the same thing. You know we're talking around developing um, like competence in a range of you know different activities. The athletic side is probably a little bit more underpinned by some of those fitness qualities. You know strength, speed, power endurance which is probably where i sit a little bit more on that side but then they're both around um you know developing uh confidence in those activities so that psychosocial aspect they're both around doing these things in a variety of different environments okay and um and and yeah and then that knowledge understanding and education like we said at the beginning is is key to them both as well so Although different, um, you know, different academic groups might talk around athletic development and physical literacy, really, I think a lot of the time we're talking about the same thing. Okay. 
It's interesting, yeah. It is when you when you look at the comparisons, when you pull them together, and I've seen some of the, the stuff that you've done before, it is very similar. Okay, so what about, what research have you been involved with currently? Uh, where are you with all this new stuff? Yeah, so I, I'll, probably, I'll probably finish telling the, my, my career story as I was only got halfway through it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> And then, and then I'll link that in. So, um, so yeah. So I guess from doing the PhD uh, or starting a PhD, research um, became something you know really that I really valued and something that I really enjoyed doing, um, which I think links into what we'll talk about. But also the other side to that is you know I'm I'm a coach, I'm a practitioner, so I'm I'm an academic, a researcher, but I'm a coach and practitioner. And I think those two things are really important um, because, you know, in a way we need we need to sort of bridge the gap between those two areas to really push things forward. So I was doing starting my PhD and then 18 months into the PhD, I, you know, I was offered the, the head of strength conditioning coaching job at, at Cast Tigers uh, with Terry after, you know, Dean, Dean left the club. And um, so I, you know, I jumped at that chance um, and, I had three, you know, three, three and a half years there as leading that program. Um, and obviously lucky enough to coach you for a, a couple of years and develop a relationship there and, and, and things. And I think I learned massively from, from that experience. Um, it was working predominantly with adults um, and I was doing a PhD in youth. So it gave me that, you know, broad spectrum of things. Um, so I finished the PhD, it took me four and a half years in total because I took it part time. And then I remember um, I'd finished the PhD, I'd handed it in, and then Terry Matteson left left Cass, and uh, and Ian Millward got appointed. So about a week later, after I'd finished the PhD and worked my socks off for um, you know three years, like Ian Millward then said, "Oh, we don't want, we don't want you at the club anymore." And it was like you know it was a real uh, a real kick in the teeth in, in a way. Um, I mean, like disappointing, I'd like I'd done that, um, and I, but I think it was really it was a, it was a good thing for me because then I went into that academia role at, at Leeds Beckett and still always coached, you know, part time, um, and I think that stuff around what you said before around developing resilience and 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 those other skills, it you know, I, although I was disappointed, I was you know, it's good, and I it, I got on with it. I'd learned, I think I've learned over time to deal with some of those things. And to get back on it, and you know, not not be negative, and and you know, probably be a bit bitter, but not be negative, not let it affect me. Um, so you know, I was looking at you know, I got a, you know, I had a, I had a probably a year of transition where I was back to doing a variety of things, but then got a job at Leeds Beckett as a lecturer back in 2012, and then I sort of come through, um, you know, the ranks there, and senior lecturer, reader, and then you know, pr- professor, um back in 2018 so my third year as a professor which i'm you know very privileged to do and what that role does is allow me to combine those research and education of of of, of students and, and people with with the practice and the coaching um and i think you know, over time my research has, has focused on rugby quite a lot and on sort of talent but then over time as having young children myself i've took a lot more interest in just you know the development of 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 children, uh, back to that athletic development, physical literacy development, and how we can improve that. And I think that's why we've had a, quite a lot of discussions and chats over time. Um, so that's where a lot of you know what my research is now. So you know, just a, a couple of uh, examples. We recently did a, a survey on uh, what a practitioner's views of long term athletic development, and this idea around you know it's it's around health and fitness physical activity and then sport sport sort of last for life for life and then really that idea around competitive uh, elite sport is sort of like the fifth priority although it's a priority we need we need to be working with everyone and to do that health and well-being and every individual is central to that journey and the more that we and that starts like we say through our own experience it starts young and that's got to start with everyone young yeah. And therefore, being able to put in place the right environments, so within school, within their, you know, within after school clubs, within community sport, and within their playtime. So for me, they're the four main areas where, you know, children and young people are going to do this type types of work activities. 
and then it needs to be underpinned by you know those ideas around athletic development and physical literacy so you know appropriate skill development appropriate physical development developing confidence for to do that um and the and the education side of, of that as well that knowledge and understanding so really that you know and that came out in the survey those things came out in the survey around you know what we do so i think it's quite clear what what we need to do it's then just how do we do that is a is a challenge um where do you start on that the way there's yeah. the elephant bit by bit where do you start because that's huge yeah. but i think again i think it comes back to what we what you mentioned before um around when working with children or developing delivering a PE session or delivering a, a coaching session it's around developing sort of you know the physical physical qualities the the movement qualities the technical and tactical again depending on the age and then the psycho psychosocial attributes as well and those four those sort of four or five things are classified as like holistic development for the, the child um and therefore if if within a session you can design those so they're doing multi multiple things of, of or, or doing all those things that's important and that's i guess where we propose the like the rampage framework to, to, to do that it's really a, an acronym for the session order uh, of what can be done and that's probably a separate podcast in itself but that's something you know we, we've been developing to to make sure you know teachers coaches plan and think around those activities and what needs to be done and then again where your your uh, the p pro app comes in is you're providing the range of those different activities for for teachers to to implement in their p teachers which is is, is vital uh, i think in relation to that and you've got a, you, you're ticking off all those areas and that and, and i think a key a key seller for you is that idea of athletic development is a is a core a core principle of what you do not just the sport specific sessions Okay, wow. There's there's lots to yeah, lots of lots of information there. And my brain is just absorbing it, thinking about things and where you can go on the rampage and different things. And wow, what a journey. Uh it just showed, you know, that that sport brings and, and the different pathways that people go on and uh the adversity you've had to overcome there, being injured at 15 out of the game and having to rebuild and then get in and then get to where you need to get to and all of a sudden boom we know in sport a piece of meat at times and boom see you later new coach comes in boom see you later but you got back on the horse and now you're a professor uh, uh do you actually do work or do you just smoke big cigars and just look at all of it <laughs> i'm joking yeah, I'm so, smoking a cigar in my uh my <laughs> So you see professors, don't you think? But listen, I appreciate being on today. I thank you very much uh, for the journey. Uh, and we look forward to the podcast talking about Rampage in a few months' time. Thank yeah, you very yeah. much. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Yeah, been a, been a pleasure. Brilliant. Cheers, Kev. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you want any more information on the PE Pro app, visit peproapp.com for your free 14-day trial. Thank you.